Thank you for watching the Tank Museum's YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. If you can support the museum, please think of backing us on Patreon or joining one of our membership schemes. Or if you watch to the end of this video, you'll be able to see how you can help the museum by buying items from our online shop. Now this is a Churchill Mark III. In fact, it's a Mark III star. And you can tell it's a three star because it's got a 75 millimeter gun in the turret but we'll come to that a bit later we're having to film this by the way in workshops so if you hear any odd noises that's unavoidable in here i'm afraid it's quite a rare vehicle in fact they're very rare these days there's one at, or we used to be one at aberdeen proving ground years ago but that's about the only other one i can think of oh there's one i think in the swedish museum without a gun but they are quite rare and um otherwise it's a Churchill tank basically underneath it's the turret that makes them so different. We'll start off by going back to the original Mark III because the Mark III was the very first Churchill to be manufactured with a six pounder gun. Before that it had there'd been the Mark I and the Mark II which had the two pounder but in this one you had the six pounder. They started off with the Mark III which was the short version of the six pounder, rather an un, sort of uh, effective weapon in a way. Later on came the Mark V, but they always had a bit of a thing, which they still have in a way, about the gun sticking out in front of the tank. In other words, if the barrel stuck out too far, they had a horrid sort of feeling that the tank would embed itself in whatever it attacked. Later on, they put up with it a bit and. Uh, had extended guns on some tanks, which seemed to work perfectly well without getting stuck. So that this is a bit of an oddity. It's got a turret which is completely box shaped. It's all welded. Now a lot of people leapt up and down in horror at the very idea of a welded turret. They said it would fall to bits when it was struck. It would break along the weld lines and collapse. And they preferred riveting, but um, in the end, the firm Babcock and Wilcox in Renfrewshire, who were actually a branch of an American company, um, insisted that they could make welds that are stronger than the actual plate. And that's what they did. They made a box-shaped version of the turret, which was completely without any openings in it, which was there just for firing at trials. And they found that the, the thing impacted very well. It stood up to whatever they cared to fire at it. And uh, from that, they then developed this welded turret for the Churchill Mark III. It's very angular. You can see it at once. They stick out a mile. So that was the very earliest of uh, the six-pounder Churchills with this kind of turret on it. They were built by Babcock and Wilcox in Renfrewshire. And then the turrets were taken down to whichever firm was turning out the Churchill III. The, basically, it's the same as a four, except for this turret which is slightly different. The other odd thing you'll notice is that the machine gun has now moved over to the left of the main gun. This is the same whether it's a 75 or a six pounder. On the Mark II it should have been with a machine gun on the right side of the gun. But um, for anything with the, the later turrets, the guns in, they put a machine gun on the left, which is quite normal and which we're more used to in many ways. The actual hull, is more or less the same as the Mark I and II, with the exception that the air cleaners are the type that uh, you'll see on this one, which take in the air from the top, rather than trying to suck it in from the ground, which makes it better for wading and for all sorts of other things. Why they didn't think of that in the first place, who knows? Also, the fact that this tank has got the exposed tracks. Now, some Mark III's had exposed tracks, the top run of the track anyway to begin with and later on by the time they had the 75 they normally had been reworked and had the covered over track on which this one hasn't but this one has been converted from a Churchill Avery and it's slightly different from the regular ones but it's a good example of a Mark III from the turret point of view which is what we want to show you. Now the other thing is the hull has been heavily up armoured. They had a, a series of systems up armoring these tanks using 20 millimetre thick 
armor plate on the sides. And that's what this one has got. It's got it welded on the doors and along the sides, held in place by big rivets and screws and that sort of thing. And um, it makes the tank look a bit heavier. Well, it was heavier, of course. They weighed about 39 tonnes in their finished form, like this. They're more suited to the, the fighting in 1944 than earlier, but uh, this is quite a good example of the type. And it shows you what the Mark III would have looked like. The other problem they had, or two problems really, the first was that the armour they'd used in making the turret, perfectly good armour, but it flaked on the inside every time it was hit. A large, what they called scab of armour, would break away from the inside and become quite lethal to the people inside the turret. And they didn't like that, but they, they found it impossible to make armour plates, rolled armour plates, that would not flake at the time. The second was that after a while, the actual supply of weldable plate ran out. So when they built about ooh, 700 of these Mark III's, that was all they could build. They had to find a new design of turret, which led to the cast turret, which of course became famous with the Mark IV. They fitted the six-pounder gun in its Mark III and Mark V versions, but those that survived, and there, there weren't that many, were fitted with the 75mm and became a Mark III star. They were quite a rare tank, but they were used in Normandy to some extent. And with the 75, they had a dual purpose weapon which would take American ammunition. Now they do say that the six pounder gun, which was 57 millimeter, was reamed out to take the 75 millimeter rounds. Personally, I find that a little bit difficult to understand how you can ream out a 57 millimeter tube to 75 millimeter and still make it strong enough to contain the charge is difficult to know, but that's what they say they did. But you can always tell they've got a full um, muzzle brake at the forward end and it, it gives the tank a, a more modern appearance in many respects. That's the, the how the, the three star works anyway. And it's only the gun that makes the difference. But that's the difference. The turret is also heavily up armoured. You can see the panels on the front and on the sides that have been welded on to increase the armour thickness of the turret, just to bring it up to date with modern weapons that are likely to hit it. Though it's not really, um, it won't stand up to the heavy impact of things like the Tiger or the Tiger II. But in a normal tank versus tank action, it's as good as any other. But um, otherwise, it's a standard Churchill with the 350 horsepower engine in the back, Merritt Brown transmission, four speed transmission in this case, and the same suspension and um, drive as the earlier Churchills. Again, you've got 102 millimetres of frontal armour, which makes it quite thick and makes it not quite indestructible, but uh, it's heading that way. It's getting quite tough, but it is getting heavier and slower. They do about 15 miles an hour on a good day, but generally they kept the speed down. 10 miles an hour was reckoned to be about the limit, otherwise the noise inside became unbearable. You got out of the tank with your ears ringing and it took about two days for the noise to get out of the system and uh, for you to hear properly. So it, it made quite a difference after a while. But that was the trouble with any of these tanks going fast. They had metal on metal from the wheels to the track and it tended to ring out a bit when they were going along. But that's how they did it, by just travelling a bit more slowly. It just cut down the noise and uh, made it a bit more bearable. But that's the Churchill 3 for you. If you like Churchill tanks or you want to know more about them, have a look at our online shop. We have a fantastic selection of books, models, clothes and other gifts on the Tank Museum online shop. When you buy from our online shop, you are supporting the Tank Museum charity and that means we can carry on caring for our collection and producing this content. If you have supported us already, thank you very much. Subscribe and do keep watching.